Hello, everybody. Welcome to books. We're going to do books. We're going to do a choose your own adventure. Goosebumps. Rhapsody and I here today. We don't know what we're calling it, but it's it's what it is. It's, it's a book. We're going to do a choose your own adventure together. How you doing? Rhapsody. Incredibly, incredibly well. It's a choose our own adventure because that's not copyrighted, right? A C-O-O-A. Correct. Choose your own adventure it is not in the lexicon at all. That is copyrighted by something else. I uh, lose your yeah. own adventure. I uh, choose your own path. I uh, we're going to be determining our yes. personal futures. Yes, pointing our way towards a specific trajectory. I don't know why mm -hmm. nobody's used that one to get around it. Uh, but yeah, I, before we get into it though. What what experience do you have with Goosebumps? Great question. Uh, I, I have what I think is probably the same experience as a lot of people uh, my relative age, so I'm talking between the, the age bracket of 25 and 35, which is uh, one day in school, Goosebumps arrived, and <laughs> then everyone fought over renting them out of the library, and eventually I managed to snag a copy and read through it. I believe mine, the only one that I ever read, uh, took place in a haunted shack. If we happen to end up running across that one, it's just going to be a nostalgia trip for me. Yeah. I, but I, it's, it's been very minimal, because like that, that is, I think, the, the kind of like the experience that a lot of Australians of my age bracket had where it wasn't really like scholastic bull f uh, book fairs and kind of like goosebumps being like a larger cultural phenomenon. How was it in America? How was how your experience with goosebumps as a franchise been? A great question. Uh, it was the scholastic book fair. <laughs> we, it, yeah. was, it rolled into town and it was the Bella de Ball. You saw the goosebumps, you wanted to look at it, but I was like, I was also sc scared a lot growing up of like anything remotely tangentially horror so i was like goosebumps mm -hmm. that is like that's an adult book that's terrifying i can't read that <laughs> and then i like started getting them and i was like oh my god these are like these are so silly these are unbelievably mm -hmm. silly and i could not yeah. take it seriously let alone be scared i read the first one i read and maybe like the only one i read from start to finish was about a plant monster i think uh and i liked it I like. I remember thinking it was good literature, though. You know, like I was like, "This is silly, but this is good literature." Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Chaucer, <laughs> Yeats. This, up, this stands up against Shakespeare. Stein. And the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But other than that, I'm not like I. I want to be more into Goosebumps in 2022. As an adult mm -hmm. man, I now have decided this is the time to be more into Goosebumps, and I, we're gonna do that who today. Knows? What if we need to have studied so we know in the future how to escape from a carnival of horrors? Exactly. I mean, you got you got to give it a shot. This is it's a simulation. We can go through it. We're gonna choose our own adventure. This is a rehearsal. We're gonna do it. Uh, are you are you ready? Do you wanna? Should we say how we're gonna do the formatting of reading it? I guess because we do have Absolutely. we both have it in, in front of us here. So there's going to be a, a uh, delineation of labor here in that Rito is going to be doing the role of our lovely narrator. We're going to be debating the track that we will take after whatever happens to appear on each individual page. And I am going to be playing the characters. Indeed. Indeed. So with that, <sighs> you know what's first? I'm, I'm just... I'm just stretching out my lungs! I mean, uh, before we get in, I guess we should choose our own adventure. Do you want to start on page one? Uh, or do you want to just bend the rules and really, like, play, a, you know, unreliable narrator? We can just jump to page 30. I mean, I, that's the real chosen adventure, am I right? Like, um, I want to start I'm on page all one. Bored. <laughs> I'm jumping to about the author. R.L. Stein's books are read all over the world. So mm. far, his books have sold more than th 300 million copies. Ooh. Okay. All, all right. right. All right, let's get to reading. That's a that's a staggering yep. number. Uh, there's there's no go to page whatever on the bottom of that one, unfortunately. So I don't think it's well, part of the contiguous story. I think it's just like a <laughs> a fragment. Yeah, that's just world building. <laughs> <laughs> it's just lore. It's Silmarillion. <laughs> All right. First things first is is definitely a voice. 
You want to take us in? Page one. What do you want to do? I don't know, Patty. What do you want to do? Not fair, Brad. I asked you first. Patty and Brad, your two best friends, arguing, as usual. It's the last week of August, and Patty and Brad haven't stopped fighting since your last summer vacation started. Patty likes being bossy. You don't mind, though. It's no big deal. It's hard to win a fight with her anyway. You don't know why Brad even tries. You guess it's because he doesn't want to look like a wimp in front of a girl. <sighs> There's nothing to do. Guess I'll just go home. Brad says. He shoves his hands in his pockets, then his shoulders slump, and he sort of shrivels up. You guess Brad is kind of a wimp, even if he is your best friend. You're so boring, Brad. Patty complains. Whenever Patty complains, her freckles really pop out. Now there's about a million of them spread across her face. Hey, I know what we should do. Patently, Patty, Patently suddenly bursts out. We go. We should go to page two. She, she says. Patently suddenly bursts out. Patently, she suddenly bursts out. Uh, and is voiced by Patton Oswalt as well. Oh my goodness! If I could do an impression, I'm gonna go to page two. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is going to be Patty. Let's bike over to Bennett's Field and let them w and watch them set up the carnival. Well, let's go over to Bennett's Field and let them set up the carnival. They're not <laughs> allowed to start without us. I mean, they have to start it first. It has to be started up. You, you can't go to it without it being set up. So, fair. It's a good point, well made. Uh, I don't know. You answer. It's getting dark, and Mom said I have to be in by nine. It's only a quick bike ride. Brad says. Are you some kind of wimp? Brad calling you a wimp? You can't believe it. Oh, okay, okay. You agree. But if it's as bad as last year, there won't be much to see. Don't you remember the main attraction? You remind them. That ride they called Terror Track? It turned out to be a baby choo-choo train that circled around and around and around. It doesn't matter what you say. Patty's made up her mind. You're going to ride over to the carnival. A hot, humid breeze blows into your face as you pedal along. Patty's in the lead, no surprise, and Brad's puffing behind you. It's dark by the time you reach Bennett's Field. You and your friends drop to your bikes, <laughs> drop to your bikes in the grass and race across the moonlit field towards a huge wooden fence that surrounds the carnival. T to take a closer look, turn to page three. I mean, oh, it's, it's I been guess... a while since I've had to crawl on my hands and bikes. Yeah, this, this is our first real delineation. Uh, you can either take a closer look and turn to page three or be done. <laughs> well, stop reading. <laughs> or be done. I, I want to, let's go to page three. I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit like I want a chance that and also it's been eight minutes. So. Oh yeah, let's do it. All right, page three. As you reach the carnival entrance, you hear music coming from inside. Not the usual corny organ stuff they always play, but some really strange music. It sounds familiar and totally new at the same time. <laughs> Brad, Brad stretches his neck to try and peer over the fence, but no luck. The fence is way too high. Patty jiggles the padlock on the gate, and it's sealed shut. Uh, I guess we'll have to just wait until tomorrow night when the carnival opens. Brad says. No way, Patty says. Let's climb the fence, now. Are you crazy? Brad says. <laughs> we'll get caught. Come on, there's probably no one in there. Patty replies. Your friends turn to you to cast the deciding vote. You glance at your watch. It's almost 9 p.m. If you're going to get home in time, you should start back now. What are you going to do? Rhapsody! <sighs> The first actual choice. If you decide to go home, turn to page 10. If you climb to the fence to get inside, climb the fence to get inside, turn to page 6. I mean... There, there is a gamer instinct deep in my soul that says in all circumstances when there is a fork in the path, you take the shortest time of that fork, explore it entirely, then return back and go to the next time, right? And so yes. anywhere where it looks like progression will exist, you avoid in time. I like where Are your head's at. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. on seeing what happens if we you, go home. Yeah, you, you're saying we have to 
ex like explore our morbid curiosity, go down all of the pathways that have all of the ammo to pick up so that when we get to the boss, we have all these items that we're not going to use. We got to go precisely. So we're going to decide to go home, turn to page 10. Lock I'm, it in. I'm deciding not to go big. Yeah. Let's I, in go, fact, will go home. Let's go home. All right. Page 10. All right. So <laughs> Page 10, you've decided not to sneak into the carnival. You're going home instead? Well, it's a good thing Patty usually makes all the decisions. Otherwise, you'd never have any fun, and this book would be over before it began. Go ahead, take a deep breath, then go climb that fence. You're not scared, are you? Turn back to it, page does six. Does this page only exist to chastise the Ab reader for making absolutely. a boring decision? Is this, is this your first Goosebumps Choose Your Own Adventure book? <laughs> in almost two decades yes then yes i mean yeah i think that we're gonna get a handful of those all right back to page right. six here we go let's do it you say to your friends let's climb the fence patty is halfway up before you finish speaking you let brad go next you're last it's hard to climb it's a hard climb up there's really no place on the fence to get a good grip but you make it to the top, swing your legs over, and tumble down. You land on the grass. You're inside. You and your friends gaze around. It's pretty dark. The only light comes from torches. At first, the carnival looks the same as it always does. Dinky rides, hot dog wagons. Then the lights start to flicker on in every corner of the field. The rides start to move. It's as if the whole place is magically coming to life. Hey, look at that giant roller coaster. You exclaim, pointing up ahead. They never had a roller coaster before. Yeah. Brad agrees. And the whole place is a lot bigger than last year. This is awesome! Patty says as she sprints towards the rides. Race on over to page seven. No choice. I mean, again, I guess there's always the delineation <laughs> if you're a quitter, but page seven. You and Brad I'm not take off. Yet. Yeah, not spooked yet? Okay. We're not going home again. Go big or go home again. <laughs> Finally go big or go home again. All right. You and Brad take off after Patty. You all stop in front of the roller coaster. <laughs> wow, Patty says as she gazes up at it. That didn't break the noise gate on my side. It's like a rocket deal out of space. Beyond, okay, beyond the roller coaster, you spy a castle surrounded by a moat and a spooky-looking haunted house sitting high atop a hill. These are the coolest rides I've ever seen, you say. They still have all that dumb choo-choo trains over there, you point out. But we could ride this stuff all night and never go near it. Patty grabs your arm and tugs you over to the other side of the carnival, to the midway. Brad races after you. Hey, where are all those dinky wooden booths from last year? You ask as you gawk at the amazing games of chance. They're gone. And in their place are giant video games and huge <clears throat> spinning studded wheels with hundreds of blinking colored lights. Let's go! <laughs> Pog champ, Patty exclaims. <laughs> <laughs> Get a load of that. Brad suddenly cries out. You and Patty spin around. You can't believe what you see. Be, be more amazed on page 87. This is bemused with my expression <laughs> and is telling me, you know what? You aren't correctly uh, receiving the situation. Be more amazed when you go to 87. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at page 87. Raps. Get a load of this page. Good lord! Whoa! You're staring at a sign that reads, World's Freakiest Freak Show! The three of you gape at the pictures. There's a three-headed man with the ugliest collection of faces you've ever seen. And the snake lady, a young blonde girl with a beautiful face and the body of a slithering snake. This is, uh... Uh... You start to say, but you don't finish because a large hand has come down on your shoulder hard you slowly turn and gaze up at a huge man with shoulders wider than a refrigerator he has coal black eyes with a thick mustache to match he looks strong enough and mean enough to pitch you over the fence with one hand what are you 
you doing? His deep voice booms. You're not allowed in here. He says, pointing directly at you. Uh, we're sorry. You say, hoping you appear sorry and not just scared. We just wanted to look around, that's all. We'll leave. Right now. His eyes stare into yours. He clamps both hands down on your shoulders and says, You're not going anywhere. Uh-oh, quick, better turn to page four. I do like the brief detour to the entire opposite half of the book before it sends you back. I it's know. kind of like when a lift goes all the way to the top floor before coming back down to the lobby and you just hit the button in the lobby. Yeah. Do, do you think it's kind of like um, they want to make sure that you don't accidentally just start reading the book one, two, three, yeah, four, five I page? Think so. like, it's like that. Also, like you might turn to it like a page and then you see on page number two, like if we were reading this in actual physical book form, like you could see kind of spoilers on the right hand side, like the book spoiling itself, like a big old mm -hmm. you, lo you lose on the right side. But you can't help but glance that out the corner of your eye. Yeah. But on to page four, we, we've got a choice on this page. What? Uh, what, what do you mean? I mean, we have a choice on this page. <laughs> uh, Brad asks, <laughs> trembling all over. I just had an idea. A great idea. The man replies. I want you kids to stay and try the rides out before the grand opening tomorrow. Patty's eyes open wide. Cool. She says. Are you sure it's alright with the owner? You ask. I'm Big Mal. Big Al, the <laughs> manager. I'm Big Manager, the Al of this place, and what I say around here goes. <laughs> Big Al rubs his temples and then digs around in his checkered jacket and pulls out three maps. He hands one to each of you. Don't eat them carefully. He says. If you have any questions, ask them now. Your eyes fall upon the map. You have a question, but when you gaze up, Big Al is gone. He's vanished. A whole carnival to ourselves! Patty exclaims. Where should we start? You stare down at your map once again. You notice the carnival is split in half. On one side are the rides, tons of them. On the other side is the midway, packed with games of chance and the freak show. What will you try first? To go on the rides, turn to page 34. To check out the midway, page 77. This is definitely mm. the first, like, the last one was technically the real choice. This is the first real choice. Yeah, I, I suspect that if we go to the rides, it's not going to say, you wanted to go to the rides, you boring nerd? Go to the midway, turn to page 77. Like, yeah. I don't think it's going to do that to us here. It might. Uh, <laughs> you, you, we let's... can only find out in one way. I would say, okay, not even putting your your yourself in their shoes. Just, like, if you went to... If you just went to a carnival that was split ride slash midway, do you have one that you're immediately jumping towards? Like just you as a as a guy going to a carnival? So yes. And I think there's a really logical reason to have this as an answer as well. Mm -hmm. Who thinks about the midway attractions when they think they're gonna go to a fair or a park or a carnival or anything like that? Right? It's you true. think about the big bopper, you think about the ferris wheel, you think about being spun up until you feel very, very ill. Uh, and it's easier to have that happen if you don't have a bunch of fairy floss on the stomach. So I go rides first. I, I would say rides first, and it's for a different reason. But also, mm. yes, but also, what happens when you go to the midway and you absolutely crush it? on the throw a ring onto a floating duck game, and now you have a life-sized minion to carry around? Where are you going to put mm -hmm. it when you go on the ride? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do with... Uh, I don't... Cars, I don't know the minion names. One of them is... What are you going to carpool with? Yeah. Uh, Larry? One of them's probably Larry, named Larry, right? Probably. Larry the minion guy, I think is probably it. Uh, but Larry the minion guy. <laughs> So, like, I mean, yeah, maybe they could take up a spot on the car, but I think we're both on the same page. Uh, let's go to... Mm, and that's 34. Page 34. We, I'm going to say that joke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 34. Let's go on the rides first. You say? That roller coaster looked awesome. Uh, okay, 
Patty agrees. Over this way. Sorry. No, she, I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of you say when it's pretty obvious because the voices are quite different from each other. So I might just skip the you says. Like, very fair. It I just, do that. Because it's just like, it's very clear which voice is which. Is me, Patty. You know, it's not, <laughs> we're not, <laughs> they're different enough. Patty, uh, you're the manager of the carnival? They call me Big Patty. She yells. Rubs temples. <laughs> rubs temples. She yells as she charges over to it. When you reach the rides, you can only stare in amazement. These are the most fantastic rides you've ever seen. The towering roller coaster, the soaring speedboats, the twisty slides. Everyone is in motion, whizzling, whizzing, whizzing, whirling, doing loop, loop the loops. I thought it was loop de loop. Is it same? Is it been the loop? I thought it was French. Loop de loop. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> doing loop the loops and they're all empty no riders no people in line cool we have the whole place to ourselves brad's face turns a little green as his gaze swings from the supersonic space coaster to the doom slide do you think they have rides that don't go upside down he asks come on Let's check out the coaster. Patty calls to you and Brad, and then they run off to its starting gate. You stop and crane your neck to gaze up at the coaster's first hill, and you gasp. Quick, <gasps> go to page 47. <gasps> All right. The tracks stretch up so high that they seem to even touch the clouds. Your gaze follows one of the cars speeding around the sharp curve. It looks like the space shuttle. You notice that it has a safety harness that locks over your body. You've seen those before. They keep you in when the ride turns upside down. <laughs> you didn't want to admit it before, but like Brad, riding upside down is not your favorite thing. Still, the coaster does look amazing. One part enters a tunnel, and you can see that the cars go fast, really fast. <laughs> You're just about to walk through the space coaster's gate when you hear spooky organ music coming from behind you. Not that old dingy stuff, no sir. You turn around, looming in the distance is a dark and creepy haunted house. You gaze down at your map, it's called the House of Horrors. Hmm, you love haunted houses. And this one is really scary. And this is Goosebumps. Now, you're not sure what to do. You won't have time for everything, the coaster or the haunted house. Decide now. If you decide to join Patty and Brad on the space coaster, get on, on board on page 26. If you want to go to the House of Horrors alone, go to page 64. Ooh. This is... I mean, I've, I've engaged in horror media before. I believe yes. the protagonists splitting off by themselves this early on yeah. is uh, usually bad. It is usually bad. It does bring me, and I think I need to unlearn this thought process because this is goosebumps. I mm. feel like that's too easy, <laughs> right? Is that not too easy of a choice to be like, yeah, that's stupid. Why would I do that? And is that the reason we do that? You know what I'm saying? I'm more than happy to do it that way because I think like the other one working out is less exciting than if House of Horrors alone does work out. That's exactly. So basically, we've already gone home. Let's go big. Exactly. And then when we inevitably die, we're going to go on the space coaster anyways. So Ooh. page 64. You, you, are you, I don't want to I don't want to be, a, you know, last thing I want to do is be a dictator in our choose your own adventure goosebumps book. I want to make sure we're on the do you. Is this, are we going to have a fight or 64? No, not at all. Okay. We're on 64. Oh, you're already yeah, on 64. I was, okay. All right. Oh, there's choices. Okay. The House of Horrors. You have to see it. You just have to. I'll catch up with you guys later. You call to Patty and Brad. I'm going to check out the haunted house. You glance down at your map for directions. The rickety wooden bridge over your left appears to lead straight there. As you cross the bridge, the wooden planks creak under your feet. Then the bridge begins to sway. You look down, way down. The bridge spans a deep, rocky gorge. Gulping, you grab... Gulping? Gulping! You grab the handrail, you move slowly. A strong wind blows up from the canyon below. 
The bridge is swaying wildly now, tossing from side to side. What? Why is there? Why is this the normal pathway to the haunted house? I mean, I, I get, mean, I mean, magic this carnival. Sets the scene well. I, it does, but it's like, just. I mean, hey. I'd say personally. You know what it actually is? What? It's not a haunted house. It's actually just the haunted ride is getting to the house. Yes. You get to the house and you open it. And it's actually really nice inside. Yeah. The it's real... a gift shop for the end of the ride. <laughs> the real horror is the screams you had along the way. Is it <laughs> what we're getting at? Uh, okay. The bridge is swaying wildly now from tossing from side to side. A massive spear of lightning splits the sky. Thunder rumbles so loudly you jump and lose your balance. <laughs> Help. Oh, did that not come through the noise gate? No. Oh, shoot. Help. You scream as you tumble right over the side and plunge towards the jagged rocks below. How can you save yourself? Make a grab for the side of the bridge or f flap your arms and try to fly. <laughs> Okay, so if we <laughs> use the same rule for the navigation that we did in the last one... It's... it's true. <laughs> I need to know if we're a bird. <laughs> I mean, you know, what if we go... Like, what if this is a good end? It's a surprise good ending, like, fine, page 30. You're like a bird, you only fly away. You don't know where your exactly. home is. <laughs> I don't know where my home is. You're falling falling you can't think of anything else to do so you start flapping your arms like a bird at that moment a huge gust of air shoots up from under you and blows you back to the bridge <laughs> breathing hard you run run the rest of the way across the rickety span when you reach safety <laughs> of the other side you glance back and gasp the bridge and the midway beyond it have vanished only a black void remains wow Awesome special effects! You cry out loud, but was your fall part of the special effects too? It didn't feel like it. You spin around to face the House of Horrors. Up close, it appears really, really creepy. <laughs> Cobwebs drip down from the roof, and an eerie yellow light glows inside. Cool! Next to the house, you spot a sign that reads, Boat Trip to Nowhere. There are amazing speedboats that you can drive yourself. <laughs> Which should you try first? Do you want to try the boat trip to nowhere or go for the house of horrors? <laughs> I like just the image of boat trip to nowhere and it, and they pick speedboats. Like, it really doesn't feel like the kind of like lazy, like floating down the river kind of horror atmosphere when you're like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going nowhere. <laughs> but do you want to board in my wake? Hell yeah! Just grab a grab a line. Exactly. Um, I also need to just bring a little bit of attention to the moment at which a it, huge gust of air shoots up from under you and blows yeah. you back onto the bridge. You know how powerful a gust of I, air would need to be to lift you back onto a bridge. I know. I, it's almost like I mean, hey, is it special effects? Did we not actually fall? Is this for real? Are we a bird? If How a gust of air with enough force to put me back on the bridge hit me, <laughs> I would lose skin. <laughs> I mean, it did, you like, know, like, maybe it happened. <laughs> it didn't say it didn't happen. It doesn't say on the page you didn't lose skin. That, you know what? That is entirely fair. Anything that isn't written on the page, I am free to imagine myself. We have half a face. Yeah. Maybe like 50% of the skin on our left arm is left at the moment. Like that was used to shield the yeah. body a little bit. It's kind of like when you get a power washer and run it against your skin up close. Like yes. Too much. Yeah. And also clearly we must be a bird. Because I want to point out also, this wasn't a death. That's bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's going to ruin and taint our decisions probably for the rest of the amount of time that we record these. <laughs> yeah. Want to try the boat trip to nowhere? Go to page 88. Ready for the House of Horrors? Go to page 66. Want to stab yourself in both eyes with chopsticks? Go to page 21. You go to page 21. You manage to master the use of those chopsticks sticking out of your eyes and feed yourself an excellent meal. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> plus that two, was the end, I said. Plus two strength. Suddenly it's an RPG. <laughs> uh, I, here, how about you take point? I feel like I, I directed us into a direction that uh, went off the rails. Do you have a, a strong feeling between boat trip to nowhere or going 
into the House of Horrors? I do. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity because I feel very strongly behind continuing to go to the House of Horrors. Okay, fair enough. I, yeah, I agree. The distance between the sign and the boats is too much for me. All right, page 66. You start up the brick path to the House of Horrors. Suddenly, someone sneaks up behind you and taps on your shoulder. You spin around and jump back. Standing in front of you is a bony skeleton, and it talks. Yeah, let's <laughs> go in there. The skeleton says. Or you'll end up like me. You stare in terror at the hideous creature. Then you burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You guys really wanted to make the haunted house totally creepy. This is going to be great. You say. You're still chuckling as you push open the giant oak door of the House of Horrors. It swings back with a long, loud creak. You step inside and find yourself in a narrow hallway. The door slams shut behind you and the hall turns darker than a starless night. I can't even see my hands. You exclaim. You stumble ahead slowly, pressing your palms against the walls to guide you. When will this tunnel end? Look for a way out on page 80. All right. You turn a corner and are instantly blinded by glaring lights. You're standing on, in a room of mirrors, walls, floor, ceilings. All mirrors, you, mirrors, bird, slash mirror. <gasps> Everywhere you gaze, you are met with reflections of yourself. In the mirrors, you see half of your face's skin has melted off. You take a few <gasps> steps forward and bonk. You hit your head on solid glass. I love that if I'm not showing it, I can just, I can canonically put in our, our head cannon. It's great. Yeah, Bonk. That, that's why I wanted to make Brad a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You hit your head on solid glass. You move one step to the left and a dozen copies of you move in that direction. Totally dizzy, you close your eyes. Maybe you can find an exit with your hands. Keeping your eyes shut, you walk until your palms hit against another glass wall. Then you hear a voice. Come this way. Over here. It calls. You walk towards the voice. Bonk! Solid wall again. Finally, your hands find an open doorway. It leads to a mirrored hallway that goes left and right. Which way do you go? Right or left? Mm. We have a decision to make. Ah. A very tough choice. Well, with no real information here, I think we should just uh, choose one of them. We'll just go right. All right. You stumble down the corridor to your right, and you peer from side to side. You're met with hundreds of images of you, and you look pretty good, baffled, and scared. Hey, uh, I, I could use some help. You call out. Silence. You pound your fist against the wall. The wall starts to move. <laughs> good, yes. Just an inch or two. An inch or two closer to you. You take a step back, but the wall is moving behind you, too. The walls are moving together. They're closing in on you. You're going to be crushed. Squeeze over to page 65. The walls are closing in faster now. You throw your arms out and try and push them away, but it's hopeless. You're going to be crushed like a bug. You suck in a deep breath. It could be the last breath you take. The floor opens beneath your feet. You drop down, 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 down. A long, agonizing scream escapes from your throat as you tumble through space. Will you ever hit the bottom? What the heck? Incoming player! You hear a commanding voice shout. Stations, everybody! A layer of webbing catches you like one of those nets trapeze artists use. Gasping, unable to understand what's happening, you bounce up and down. Bounce on over to page 31. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh -oh. What the heck? I, I read ahead for character information as quickly as possible to try and get the voices I'm going to have to do in the context in which they are. And sometimes when I flip to a page and immediately chuckle, it's just because I've realized the character I get. Yeah. I also see the word, well, you know. Uh, you snap your head around to the right where you hear footsteps coming towards you. You're facing a short man with wrinkly skin and bloodshot eyes. His bushy black hair resembles a scouring pad. And from the looks of it, it even probably feels like one too. His evil expression makes you cringe. But he's nothing compared to the things in back of him. Two seven-foot-tall monsters 
One has blue horns and bulging red eyes. The other has scaly skin and an alligator snout that snaps open and closed as he eyes you. The trio all wears lab coats, and from the eager way they're looking at you, you realize that you are the lab rat. You struggle to escape from the net, but you're trapped in the webbing, like a fly in spider's web. Uh, I'm just going to quickly retcon the voice of this character, given the extra information we now have. <clears throat> This is the same character from the previous page, y'all. Uh, Welcome to my humble laboratory, short man says. I am Dr. Frank N. Stone, the mastermind who created the Carnival of Horrors. The Carnival of Horrors? You don't like the sound of that. Go to page 89. Dr. Stone extends a long, bony hand to pull you from the net. When you peer into his face, his eyes roll up into his head. Please to eat you. <laughs> he rumbles. Did he say... Please to meet you, or... Please to eat you? You're not sure, and you don't want to hang around to find out. I've got to get out of here, you think. As the doctor lowers his hand a bit more, you wriggle your right foot free of the netting. If you give him one hard kick in the stomach, maybe you can make a run for the door. But what about the monsters? Can you dodge them? You change your mind. I'll wait. I'll play it cool and see like, at least one of the monsters leaves the room. You say to yourself. Then you change your mind again. No, I'd better make my escape now. The doctor looms inches away, and you're not sure what to do. You better decide fast. Try and kick the doctor and run? Or wait until one of the monsters leaves and the odds are better than three against one? Page 57. So... The one thing I do remember from my experience in uh, Goosebumps novels mm -hmm. uh, was every time I was confronted with a uh, a situation that looked like it was bad, I was pretty sure that if I just stuck with it, it would turn out fine. Yeah. And then uh, it didn't. <laughs> and then a lot of the time it would be like, oh, yeah, no, the skeleton eats you. Like, obviously. I, I Got agree. a thought on this one? I have one issue with the thing you said. Uh, mm. Goosebumps, uh, it is, they're actually referred to as epics. Uh, so, Sorry, my apologies. These other, than that, <laughs> other than that, I'm with you. <laughs> they're called epics, they're called classics. Uh, yeah, you know. I, other than that, yeah, I'm with it. I, so you think, are you implying kick the doctor and run? Yes, I believe the other one may actually lead to our deaths. It's true. All right, let's kick the door and run. The doctor leans over. He's so close now. His sour breath fills your nostrils. Then his fingertips brush your hand and pow, your foot flies into his stomach. A direct hit. Critical hit. ka ka combo But nothing happens. He doesn't scream. He doesn't even moan. In fact, <laughs> in fact, he doesn't seem to notice at all. He simply smiles at you. Now you're scared, really scared, but you know you have to do whatever it takes to get out of there. You have to find your friends and escape from this carnival of horrors, so to speak. <gasps> you gather up every ounce of courage and strength you have and kick him once more harder. And this time something does happen. Big time. Turn to page 67 to find out what. Uh. Okay. Oh. Thrumpf. Thrumpf, your foot plows Thrumpf. into the doctor's stomach again, but this time it smashes right through it and hits solid steel. The crunch of metal echoes in the room along with the doctor's screams. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he wails like a siren. You gaze into the gaping hole, your sneaker made. Thousands of circuits and wires burn and crackle inside of it. The doctor is a robot. Well... An ex-robot now. Your kick totally destroyed him. <laughs> okay, I can solve this puzzle. The doctor is a robot. <laughs> yes, good. All right. Your kick totally destroyed him. That's the good news. The bad news is headed for you. It's the monster with the blue horns and the red bulging eyes. You scramble out of the net and dash towards the door, but the monster is too quick for you. His tentacle arms, what? Shoot towards you and Excuse snatch me, you. Know it. Out of nowhere, giant suckers at the end of his wrist circle your throat. You gasp for air as the monster pins you against the wall. Can you free yourself from his oozing grasp? Try on page 90, 91. I guess the number doesn't really matter. I feel like 
we I... still have only one monster that we're dealing with here. <laughs> Yeah. We got all the benefit of waiting for one to leave without having to you know, it's wait true. for one to leave. We I mean we we wrecked one. We got like a I mean we like three stocked. We like three stocked that guy. Like no wish no I issue. I thought that was I thought that was uh, Dr. Stone. Yeah. I think I think isn't it? Yeah, we 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 bopped Dr. Stone. Yeah, we got Dr. Stone, but they have two 7 yeah. foot tall monsters behind Correct. Them. Three stock is a, is a super smash brothers. <laughs> we wrecked them. I don't know. I know. Okay, cool. The red eyed <laughs> beast. There was that was for me alone, and I'm sure nobody else watching this has ever played. Uh, press you hard against the wall. Hold on, let me reread that. I'm confused now. <laughs> that uh, mm -hmm. I need full context again. Uh, <laughs> I need I, in a Chuck Tingle novel suddenly. Yeah, I need uh, I need some uh, full context. The red eyed beast leans against you now, pressing you hard against the wall. Okay, maybe context doesn't help. The monster moves his face close to yours. The jagged horns at the top of his head. Nick your cheeks. You can't bear it anymore. You bring your hand up with all your might. And shove his head away from yours. As you watch in horror, the monster's head rolls off its neck. The head tumbles to the floor and lands at your feet. The eyes glance up at you, and you notice his hideous lips moving. The head says. Really? He never finishes. You've destroyed another robot. Almost out of here, you whisper Almost. to yourself. We're doing great. Now all you have to we do are. is slip by the crusty alligator snout creature guarding the door. You robots aren't so tough. You say to him with fake bravery. Oh, really? The scaly beast croaks. Well, maybe not. But what makes you think I'm a robot? Context clues. Turn to page 122. <laughs> All right. The creature slides one step towards you and with a burning stare says, I am not a robot. I'm not going to shut down. So don't bother with any of your silly human tricks. You stare at him. You study him hard. Is he lying? Is he a robot like the other two? <laughs> or is he coincidentally not? Or could he be a lot more dangerous? Your knees begin to tremble when you think that you are never going to go home, even though you've, you've already been. Never seeing your family and friends ever again. Tears start to sting your eyes. Angry tears. No carnival. Not even a carnival of horrors is going to defeat you. You stare deeply into the eyes of the evil creature hovering before you. Hovering? That seems robot-like. Yep. Before you, robot, real monster, you finally decide. Uh, I want to put emphasis on no carnival, not even a carnival of horrors, is going to defeat mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yep. Implying that a normal carnival is more likely to defeat you, and also a concern. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking about. Like, are there other carnivals that are more likely to defeat you than a carnival of horrors? Like, are you just, I don't know, really allergic to animals and a petting zoo would take you down? Could be. To be fair, like a small town carnival, like, they, they pack those up and they move them so quickly. So they, A, so they can put, like, any copyrighted materials on the ride and market it as that. And then like they get to pick up and move before anybody can catch them. And also B, they don't have to keep up with the uh, safety standards on the ride as much. Cause like you do a little murder, you just pick up and you bring your stuff to the next town, you know? So I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe so far we've been here and we haven't died. So I don't know if you think the Despite creature making a couple of decisions with the almost explicit intent yes, to put ourselves in I, danger. I, I, despite our best efforts, we are alive still. If you think the creature is a robot, try and knock its head off on page 81. If you think he's a real monster or something worse, stay cool on page 110. I Here's the... Okay. Obviously, yes, I think robot. Thing two, there is an alligator on the cover of the book. I don't know what that has to. I don't know what that means, but the cover of the book is a, has an alligator. Um, I it, I don't you know. know what I actually I like this reasoning as well, and part of it in my mind. I don't know if Goosebumps is one of the kind of uh, series where 
if we go to page 81, the creature will have been a robot. If we go to page 110, the creature will have been a real monster or something worse. Like it will just decide based on the way we're actually going with it. Yeah, that is true. That is true. It is very much the kind of book where it rewrites history based off of what you pick. Like you'll have mm. endings where like a villain is was actually a good guy the whole time, but in every other story, he is definitely the villain. So, yep. So what do you think? I think maybe he's a real monster or something worse might be a, a more exciting. We've seen a creature's robot head be kicked off before. That's true. We've done it twice. <laughs> we we three stalked mm -hmm. them both, you know? Uh, Absolutely handled. All right. 110. Something tells you that this monster is not a robot. This one is for real. Maybe it's the way he stares into your eyes, or maybe it's the rows and rows of razor-sharp teeth jutting from its mouth. You take a step back, he takes a step closer. A drop of drool drips on your hand. Wait, a drop of drool drips on your hand. It sizzles and burns. This is mm. the end, you figure. You'll never escape the Carnival of Horrors. Never see your family or Patty and Brad again. The monster lifts his gigantic clawed hand. He waves it over your head and you wait for the searing pain as it plunges down to strike you. But that's not what happens. The monster slowly lowers his hand and clutches at his own neck and then pulls his own head off. And then you discover what's underneath and you know you're still in big trouble. Quick, head over to page 133. It's your mom and dad. What? No, that's not. We told book. you not to go out late at night. We told you in a situation where you go big or go home, always Please. go home. I did, Mom. It told me to go back to the page. I had no other option. It wouldn't let me go pay, go to page two hundred sixteen to turn on the Nintendo Switch. It didn't let me, Mom. <laughs> Anyway, and even if it did, I wouldn't be able to leave that page for a while because it doesn't have a save function while I'm in battle, mom. <laughs> Quick, head over to page 133. How have we not died? I, I'm yet. Uh, yet. <laughs> those eyes behind the alligator snout, those beady eyes, you should have recognized them before. It's Big Al. Hey, you did a great job here. He says warmly. You really, really got the stuff for the Carnival of Horrors. Uh, th thanks. You mumble. But I have to go home now. What's the rush? He asks, patting you on the shoulder. Are you having fun? Fun, you think? Crushed between the solid walls and attacked by bulging-eyed monster? Fun? No, this isn't fun. This is weird. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been really great, but, um, <laughs> I do really have to get home. Stand so up. if you'll just take me to where Patty and Brad are and then show us the way out, we'll, we'll be going. I'm afraid that isn't possible. Just open the door and you'll understand. You have no choice. You have to open the door and go to page 117. Oh my God. You open the door and enter a room bursting with people who seem to be waiting for you. You think that's weird until you study them and realize something is even stranger. They're all dressed up in old-fashioned costumes. To the Carnival of Horrors. A tall woman with a red parasol says, smiling. Nice of you to join us. The Carnival of Horrors. The words send shivers down your spine. The woman with the parasol whispers in your ear. Don't you want to know the secret of the Carnival of Horrors? For some reason you nod yes. The Carnival of Horrors comes alive in a different place, in a different time, each night. Tonight, we're in your town. Tomorrow we could be in another country. But every place we stop, we invite kids like you to join us. Thanks for the invitation, but I gotta go. <sighs> I'm sorry. You can't escape. From the Carnival of Horrors. Unless... Unless what? Turn to page 106. Oh. What? <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> you can escape the Carnival of Horrors if you leave before closing time. <laughs> That's it? When is closing time? When the last ride stops. At midnight. 
You glance at your watch. 11.40. 20 minutes. That's not so bad. But how do you get out of here? As if the lady can read your mind, she says, There's only one right way. Then all around you, the crowd begins to chant. I think I'm going to say this one with you. Only, only one, one right, right way. Only, only one, one right, right way. One. They repeat it over and over again. W what is it? Which way? It's useless. They're not going to tell you, but it's not midnight yet. There's still time to figure it out until the floor begins to tremble and the walls begin to shake. Earthquake! <laughs> this is what I, this is exactly yes. it, right? Yeah. This is the goosebumps, is goosebumps stuff I love, right? Yes. The entire page up until literally the last word Earthquake. is entirely unrelated. I also want to point out... <laughs> You cannot leave the Carnival of Horrors unless, unless what? Unless you leave. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. What? Unless you do. You, oh. can't, you can't leave unless you go through the door. <laughs> that's, that's like, <laughs> you can check out any time you like. But you can never leave unless you do. <laughs> Turn to page 42, because earthquake. All right. <laughs> A wave of panic washes over you as the walls crumble around you. You throw your arms over your head and close your eyes. Then silence. The shaking stops. When you open your eyes, the room and all the costume people have vanished. And you are outside, in the rides area. But the biggest surprise of all is that you spot Patty and Brad. Boy, am I glad to see you. You say, racing over to them. Where have you guys been? Brad shakes his head. You wouldn't believe the rides we were on. We've got to get out of here before midnight. Oh, gosh. You say, quickly, you tell your friends about the warning from the lady with the red parasol. No problem. Patty says, sorry, whoops. Look, no, it's okay. I'm sure the exit is right over there, past that ride called the Hall of Mountain King. No, 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 it's, it's this way, near the sign that says Halloween Express. Brad insists. I just, we, there's no, I mean, I'm happy about it, but there's no, sort of like, pomp or circumstance, just, hey, I, you know, gotta get out of here before midnight, or we're here forever like they they were just on rides 107 click to the page of 107 let's check out that pig gint suite oh all right 107 sorry brad i think patty's right you tell him as you turn towards the howl of the mountain king i think i spotted an exit when we came first in patty runs ahead look there's a path. It leads past the Hall of the Mountain King to the exit. Yeah, but who are those people up there? They're blocking the way. You peer ahead and see them. The people in the old-fashioned clothes, and they're still chanting. Only, only one, one right, right way. way. Only, only one, one right, right way. way. Only one right way. They're not going to let us out. Uh, okay, okay. I have an idea. Uh, let's go into the Hall of the Mountain King ride. Maybe we can jump off at the end and sneak past them? Do you have another choice? No. If you want to go on the Hall of the Mountain King ride, turn to page 75. If you want to go on the Hall of the Mountain King ride, pay, turn to page 75. Do you have another choice? No. I tried to scroll down to see if there was another one. Nope. It's page 75 it is then. The three of you duck inside the Hall of the Mountain King. A painted backdrop of a rounded snow-capped mountain of rounded snow-capped mountains rises on your left. Up in the mountains, a big stone castle rests in sunshine. A group of cheerful elves picks flowers in the castle's garden. To your right, you spot the ride. Wooden carts pulled by real horses. Come on! You call to your friends. Jump in a cart. This is great. We'll be out of here in no time. No time. That reminds you. You glance at your watch. You have no time. It's 1145. Mm. You all scramble into the one of the carts and grab the reins. Your horse plods forward, and you pass through a painted stone archway. You gasp. Suddenly, everything in the painted backdrop is now in front of you, and it's suddenly become real, but different. The snow-capped mountains rise to black, jagged peaks that pierce the sky. The big stone castle huddles on a dark, scary, dark hill. <laughs> and the elves, they aren't picking flowers. They're... Turn to page 96. 
swinging axes. Your heart leaps into, into your throat. The elves move to the roadside now, and they're chopping down the horse-drawn carts ahead of you. One, what? One cart splinters into a million pieces before your horrified eyes. The elves That's a strong hit. That is a strong, yes. These elves, they just, they three-stocked the cart. Uh, the elves <laughs> continue on to the next cart. Their sharp blades slice right through it. Your horse keeps trotting up the steep path. You're headed right for the for the wildly chopping elves. And then... Do something, Patty cries. Turn to page 23. Oh. Uh, again, uh, unfortunately, short, louder uh, exclamations seem to be cut off by Discord's uh, voice monitoring here. Discord, you're ruining everything. You yank on the reins, but your horse plows ahead, pulling you forward closer and closer to the chopping, 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 blades, Brad squinches, squin Brad squinches down in the cart and buries his head in his lap. Patty jumps into the front seat with you. Together, you pull on the reins and scream. Whoa, fella, whoa. But your horse trots onwards. It's no use. We'd better jump. You stare over the side. You're riding along a narrow ridge, and there's a deep drop that makes your blood run cold. If you jump, you'll plunge to your death. Then you glance up ahead and a safe spot to leap. Great. You're about to show... Wait, you're about to show it to your friends when Brad cries out. Look at the elves. They're chopping at set times. If we can get the horse to go faster, we can miss these axes. That's dumb. We should jump, argues Patty. What do you think we should do? Decide to jump out or urge the horse to gallop. I, I don't know. Have we hit the first cycle? Like, do we have to, are we going to have to wait for a little bit of time? Yeah. Or are we going to have to speed up? Like, oh. it's true. And, and, or is this the kind of thing where it looks like there's a cycle and, you know, like, but then one of the Koopas will fall off one of the ledges and do something mm. like they had a set, like, you know, I, uh, it's it's perfectly ready to screw you up if you treat it as though it's a cycle. Exactly. I'm, I'm honestly on board, but both of these are also kind of like high danger action scenes. So both of them yeah. are kind of good with me. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like they're not going to like, well, I mean, they could. I feel like we're at the day. We are really in the danger zone. Do you think gallop sound fun? Let's give it a gallop. Let's give it a gallop. You take charge of the reins to urge the horse on. Giddy up, boy! You and Patty shout, but your horse won't move any faster. You shoot a glance up ahead, the elves are chopping, and a shiny blade is now right over your head. Oh! Oh, let me out of here! You feel a sharp pain, and you realize you've just had the shortest haircut of your life. Unfortunately... They took a little too much off the top. The end. We got a good ending. We, we got, got a, a nice, <laughs> nice haircut, haircut. And we survived. We got a nice it haircut. It doesn't say we died. It's true. Uh, all right. What was the last page? Do you remember? Uh, oh, boy. Good question. Great question, ain't it? Uh, I'm going to say 120 something. I got it. 23. 123 or just, just 20, 23? I just control f horse. Excellente. All right. So I guess, hey, let's, uh, you want to decide? I'm feeling strongly that we should decide to jump out. Because I think Brad's stupid. I still feel like we, okay, sure, I'll roll in. No, All right, I don't fine. know. The other one's like a good idea. Okay, fine. Page 119. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I did jump back to it just in case. You take All charge right, of the reins to earn the horde, horse on. Okay, fine. <laughs> 103. Okay, 103. We've got to jump. You tell Patty and Brad? It's our only chance. Okay. Brad agrees as your cart inches up to the chopping elves. Come on. Ow. But Brad is too paralyzed with fear to move. You and Patty grab him and haul him to the side of the cart. Your cart has reached the elves, the chopping elves, mind you. One of them smirks as he lifts an axe. Chopping axe, it's right above your neck. You picture your chopping. head... Yep, chop, choppable neck. You picture your head tumbling down the side of the mountain. With a loud cry, all three of you jump. 
You land with a thud on a rocky ledge. It breaks your fall, but the rock is too weak to hold all of you. You scream again as the edge tears loose and the world drops from underneath your feet. You tumble over and over down the side of the mountain. Go to page you know, 109. It, it shouldn't just be this page that did it to me, but this is this is Until Dawn. This is the written yeah. version of Until Dawn. <laughs> Absolutely. That, like, it is 100% you just had a premonition of how you would have died. You yes. picture your head tumbling down the side of the mountain, but... At the last moment you jump like it's like you've gotten one of the totems and the totem yes. has shown you your future misfortune 100 percent. oh my god <laughs> okay you squeeze your eyes shut and wait for a crash finally you land and you glance up you're at the foot of, of the log flume ride you patty and brad have lots of cuts and bruises but you're okay you wish you had a little bit of a better haircut Terrific, though, you think, until you spot the army of elves with axes. They are rushing down the mountain towards you. The only escape is to enter the flume ride, so you dash inside. The log flume ride reminds you of the western logging camp, complete with log cabins, trees, trunks, and sparkling blue lake. In the There's a lake in the ride? I want to go. Mm -hmm. In the distance, you can hear the buzz of chainsaws, and down by the lake, the great giant cranes pick up logs and plop them in the water. Some of the logs are hollowed out in the middle of the seats for passengers. As you watch, the current catches one. It glides to the edge of the waterfall, plunges over, and shoots down. You glance around. You spot an exit sign. Then, to your horror, you see a giant crane swinging your way. Duck! You scream. Will you make it to the exit? Is this your lucky day? If you're reading this book on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday, go to page 114. If it's a Tuesday, Thursday, or Sunday, go to page 71. So, Raps, this is yes. great news that we are in separate time zones, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? It's actually surprisingly good news. Because it's Saturday in my time zone and Friday in your time zone. The only two dates that are next to one another are both in the same uh, selection here. It looks like it's our lucky day. So, uh, uh, it is. I mean, that should, should be one fourteen, right? Uh, let's start with one fourteen. Yeah, this is your lucky day. You duck as no. I thought it was like you lucky day. You duck. <laughs> You duck as the crane <laughs> swings as <laughs> crane swings over your head. Run! You shout to your friends, you glance down at your watch. One wait, one one five five. Let's sure. Uh it's eleven fifty five. You're really if you're really lucky, you can still make it out of the carnival by midnight. If you you can see the exit up ahead as you charge through the gate, you feel really hopeful until you run into Big Al. He blocks the exit with his huge body, his massive hands are planted on his hips. No one escapes from the Carnival of Horrors, he roars. You've got to find a way out. Now! You haven't been. That's not what you've been doing. Now you have to find a way out. <laughs> to your right is the entrance to the Halloween Express. You could try that, or maybe you should run down a different path. There's got to be more exits around here somewhere. Choose fast. I mean, the Halloween Express does have the word express in the title. It's true. And also, I feel like maybe it's being like, hey, you know, I think that you sh this is your chance to get back on the other one. Like, mm -hmm. go, go right ahead. You want to do it? I think we should, yeah. Let's go to the Halloween Express. I mean, there was some hesitation there. Honestly, the only hesitation was was whether or not, like, I should read anything into the fact that the different path is on page 5 and the Halloween Express is page 108. Yeah, I don't know. But, all right, here we go. 108. We've got to get out of here. It's almost midnight. You say as you run towards the Halloween Express ride. Hey, maybe we should try one of these cars. Brad says, pointing to the red and orange cars that run on a track. The three of you crowd into a little car that's really meant for two. You jam your foot on the gas pedal and you're flying. All right, yeah. <laughs> run away home. Hey, I wonder why they call this the Halloween Express. You turn your wheels sharply to the left, and then you know why. Speed on over to page 54. Your Halloween Express car pulls up in front of a cottage, and the cottage door opens with a creak. You all jerk your heads over and peer at the door. You see a skeleton wearing an evil smile, and he lunges right for you. Trick or treat! <laughs> he screeches. Then he stretches his bony hands out to snatch you. You pound on the gas pedal, and the car shoots forward out of the skeleton's grasp. Your heart begins to race as the car speeds out of control. You tear through the eerie forest, speed past more cottages. 
but you still don't see a way out. And then it comes into view. A service exit. All you have to do is stop the car, jump out, scramble through the fence, you'll be free. You check your watch. Still somehow, five minutes to midnight. Literally no time has moved since the last time you checked your watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Quick, turn left, don't stop. Turn left and go to page 83. You squint hard at the road ahead of you and see why Patty wants you to turn. There they are, the people in the old-fashioned clothes, only they don't look the same. Some have green flesh, some are deathly white. Their rotting skin hangs from their bones, and they're all reaching out, reaching out for you. Turn! Patty yells. You spin the wheel sharply to the left to avoid them, but you can't dodge the ghostly creature that's rising above you. He's ten feet tall, with arms so long they could scrape the ground. His mouth gapes open to reveal hundreds of blackened, rotting teeth. He swoops down at you. You turn the steering wheel hard to the right. Too hard, it comes off in your hands. Jump! J jump! Jump and run! Run! The three of you leap out of the moving car, but are you fast enough? That depends on how good your reflexes are. Try this test to find out. Throw a ball in the air. Try to clap three times before you catch it. Um, okay. I don't have a okay. ball. I'm, I'm going to use a... a... <laughs> I'm going to use medicine. I'm going to use... Um, Got it. Did you clap three times? Yes. Although, okay. again, noise. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Loud, I'm going to use... I'm going to use... I'm going to see if the noise gate gets this. I'm going to use this little machine. All right. One, two, I'm going to see if I can do it. Oh, that's easy. That's baby stuff. Was this a book made for kids? Yeah. Was this a book made for kids or something? <laughs> this isn't a book made for jugglers. This is a book made for kids. Yeah, I, get, I mean, should we go to page 73 or be liars? We did it. All right. We have good reflexes. We don't need to get punished. Yeah. Your reflexes are great. You jumped out fast enough and escaped the ghost. That ghost. What? <laughs> you jumped out fast enough to, and, to escape the ghost. That ghost. But you didn't see, oh, but you didn't see the other one behind the car waiting for you. Your heart hammers away in your chest as it circles you around and around and around. It's all right. It's all right. It's not real. This is just a ride in an amusement park. You're still telling yourself that as the ghost plucks you off your feet. His black lips part. He opens his mouth wider and wider until it's as wide as the entrance to a cave. Then he stuffs you inside. Instantly, you feel lightheaded and then light all over. You peek down at your hands. You can see straight through them. You've been turned into a ghost. And as your senses fade, you hear a distant bell chime 12 times. Too bad. The Carnival of Horrors will always be one of your favorite haunts. Forever. I mean... No. I can't believe our reflexes being good did get us punished. Do you want to go back? I think we must because one twenty-seven. Very, very close to the end. One twenty-seven. All right. Your reflexes suck. You, no, it doesn't <laughs> suck. you're not fast enough you're to get trash, a trash bud. You're trash bud. Get back down, bronze league ball thrower, <laughs> hand clapper, son of a gun. Looking, you're running now, but the ghost swoops down in front of you. You plow into him and pass right through him. The carnival people are swarming after you. They don't want you to leave the carnival. Hurry! You yell to your friends, only three minutes to midnight. You dash off in one direction, then another. The carnival people are approaching from every which way. They carry torches with flames that leap high in the air. You see a glance at your watch. 11.55. 11.58. <laughs> that sentence took one minute, apparently. <laughs> yeah. 11.58. We can't let them catch us. Uh, let's hide. But where can you hide? Up ahead, you see a gigantic cannon. All three of you could easily fit in there. You also spot a baby ride. The baby choo-choo train. Maybe you could squeeze into that. Quick, pick one and hope for the best. Rita, Do you we think... both know we gotta go on that baby choo-choo train, It's right? deus ex choo-choo. Mm -hmm. We gotta. Deus right. ex trachina. <laughs> deus ex trachina. <laughs> All right, you squeeze into the choo-choo and scrunch down. 11.59, lights from the carnival people's torches sweep over you. Their foul smell fills your lungs. The blood pounds into your temples. You're sure they're going to find you, but you're trapped now. There's no way out. 
you hear someone shout in the distance. Closing time! And then you hear a bell start to chime. Midnight. One, two, three. Brad counts the chimes. You want to strangle him. Four, five. Suddenly, the kitty train starts to move. Six, seven, eight. You sit up, and what you see is the biggest shock of this whole horrible night. Turn to page 70. Nine, ten. Brad, shut up. Look at this. You point to the letters on the front of the train car. You've been staring at them the entire time. Why didn't you notice them before? What about the letters? Patty says sharply. Eleven. Don't you see what they say? You shoot back. The right way railroad. So what? The chance of the merry-go-round people... The, the chance of the merry-go-round people echo in your head. There's only one right way. There's only one right There's way. There's only one right way. Could it be? Twelve? Now what? Turn to page 52. Just as the clock strikes twelve, the train enters a tunnel. You hold your breath, wondering what you'll see when you reach the other end. Chug, chug, chug. The choo-choo slowly, choo -choo slowly pulls out of the tunnel, <laughs> and you are surrounded by carnival workers everywhere. Chug along to page 24. Carnival workers, the carnival workers who set up the same rinky-dink carnival you go to every summer. You can't believe your eyes. You must be seeing things. Patty tries to say something smart, but she can only manage to say is... Huh? Hey, kids! A worker yells at you. Get away from that ride. Uh, carnival doesn't start until tomorrow night. You gaze around in wonder at the faded games, the baby rides, the tacky food stands. For the first time in your life, it all looks great. We'll be there! You shout as you head for your bikes. This is the greatest carnival I've ever seen. The end! We did it! How many we deaths? How many deaths? Three, four? Three, I think? It's not too bad. That's not too bad. Not at all. I mean, look. Most what? games will allow you to collect up to 99 extra lives, right? Mm, mm, so, mm. yes, we are almost certainly still alive if yes. we've done any side exploring of the area. And in fact, and we Brad did. is a we gamer. Went to the horrors. Brad yeah. is a gamer. Yeah. Patty is also a gamer. Patty's a gamer. They're all gamers. They're all gamers. Gamers all the way down. What a roller coaster that one was. <laughs> I, but for real, like. We started, we went in, we were going to that haunted house, we fell off the bridge trying to fly, but then got launched back up, mm -hmm. skipped the boats, went back in the ride, and then, and then there was three robots, we mm -hmm. killed two of them. So, uh, two robots and Big Al. <laughs> yes, we killed. Sorry, <laughs> we killed two robots that w two that were robots. Then there was Big Al. I just th th this was this jerked everywhere. <laughs> it's it, just uh, there's so much it, content it did, here. <laughs> it did so much as well. I feel like we've played like you know like thirty percent of a bunch of different I know. contiguous lines through. Yeah. But like I feel like they're all their own separate little chunks, and I can't imagine that there is like seeing what we saw, I can't imagine there is like truly a contiguous line except for I don't want to go to the carnival, go home. <laughs> like that's the most yeah. contiguous full story that you could get. And even that, it wasn't like the end. It's go back to the other page. Like mm -hmm. you don't be a baby. But uh wow. So what's your review of of um of this book here what's your review of escape from the carnivals of horrors number one in the reader beware you choose the scare give yourself goosebumps book Seems. well i mean 
Tolstoy and Dostoevsky could never, is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, a yeah. work of great classical art. I'm saying that they need to release a, a, a DLC to Civilization where in creating <laughs> the great works for different areas, you can create goosebumps. However, yes. I need it to be its own victory condition where you have uh, be scared, beware, and all of the other readers on exactly. the map, they're terrified of you and you win. That was really good fun. I will say there is one slight thing that I was hoping that uh, Goosebumps did. Like, I'd hoped I'd remembered it as though that it had done this. Hang on, let me explain what I actually mean. Okay. I was really hoping when they said, only one right way, only one right way, like, that's obviously a clue. I was hoping that we were going to have some sort of hint in the text, like, oh, the choo-choo train we know from previously only goes in the right direction once, or, like, something that gave you a little bit of a hint, uh... rather than, oh, you just happened to have done the correct thing, and yeah. here's the proof that that was in the past. Yeah, but I think that they like want us to I think they want you to flounder. They want you to get like all the ends because they want you to be like, oh, wow, I read this book for, you know, I got two hours out of this book. Yeah, I was about to say, otherwise it's a pamphlet. Yeah, exactly. But also, I don't know, I just had a good time. I had a good time. This went This went oh, no. how I was hoping it was going to. I'm very pleased. Uh I, I could not agree more. For something that we couldn't entirely envision in our yeah. mind's eyes before the start of the session, I I felt like it was something that we'd been doing for a couple of weeks immediately. Yeah, I I enjoyed this, the beginning of a, a beautiful podcast, maybe. Maybe, who knows? Mm. I, and if uh, you all out there in viewers land, the viewers who are beware also happen to enjoy it. Why don't you try and help us name the series? It's Rito and Rap something, 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 yes. something. Or not. It's just viewer beware. Viewer beware is not awful. It's viewer cool. beware. I think that's Good for thoughts. the t that one's for the TV show. That one might be trademarked. I think listener mm. beware is the only one that probably isn't trademarked. And I don't even know if reader beware is trademarked. So yeah, give us a name <laughs> for this. If this was a podcast, what would it be called? Let us let us know down below in the, the comment section. Uh, where you know, mm. but yeah, I had good fun. Um, I don't know. It, it's str it's strange to do a plug uh, at the end of reading a book, but a uh, very very slightly strange. Uh, I I will uh, alleviate the anxiety on your side by immediately saying, hey, I do like a lot of voice acting in the content I record these days. So if you like voices, the if if that didn't grate heavily on your ears the entire time and you think that you could enjoy that in a certain context, then there's a lot of games on my channel where I do that. I highly recommend the Disco Elysium playlist in particular. I was going to say a lot of the voices really like reminded me of the Disco Elysium voices to an extent. And I Honestly, enjoyed Disco it. Honestly, Disco Elysium, like, it super broadened my voice repertoire. Like, the... The fact that they would give you like two lines of a character and then after that they would not be voiced, at least in the original version, yeah. uh, gave me the ability to try and just expand really ridiculously. Like I, I mentioned at the start of the session to you beforehand, like, oh, I'm going to be writing all of these characters down. Like, oh, this person is, you know, South American, uh, South USA. Like uh, this is a Southern version of Sans Undertale kind of thing. That's that's Brad, basically. Yeah. Um, and Kim Kitsuragi is a voice that just lives in my head permanently. It's yeah. going to come up in one of these characters at some point, I'm certain. Yeah. But, yeah, anywho, I, I guess the only other thing is, I'm curious, what is the next book in the Goosebumps you choose to scare? Give yourself Goosebumps. Let's find out. What is the number two? I, I'm deathly curious to give ourselves a... Ah, TikTok. You're dead is the name of Goosebumps number two. Uh, so hey, maybe that's maybe that's a teaser. We'll see. Uh, but alas, it's been good fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so hey, so do, do subscribes. Do not miss if there is more, and check out the other stuff that's not books because we do games. <laughs> but this is kind of a game. It, I mean, it's I think it's called a game book. Like Choose Your Own Adventure is trademarked. So, the, but mm -hmm. the term is just game book. So, hey, mm -hmm. let's play a game book. We did it. We did a let's play of a game book. And did it. 
did hey, very well. Hey, yeah, I think so. But hey, I guess it's time to wrap up. So I had good fun. Uh, there's links for everything you might be interested in, surely, in the description. So go check that out. Thank you, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Adios.